Party's over. everyone and welcome to another DVD review. If you'll notice that uh, recently I just put a Human Centipede review video up and you're probably thinking, you know, didn't you already have a review of that up? Well, the answer to that question is yes. I've already, I had already reviewed Human Centipede, but I thought that my first reviews of Human Centipede 1 and 2 weren't very good because I was just getting into YouTube. I was just learning how to use my webcam. I was just learning how to use um, YouTube videos and my webcam, like I was saying, stuff like that. So I wanted to re-review them after watching them several times. So anyways, I just recently watched this about a month ago, and I, but I've seen this movie countless times. I saw it back when I, first, I bought it back when it first came out. And uh, I absolutely loved it. And that is uh, uh, The Human Centipede 2, a uh, full sequence starring, uh, once again, uh, Ashlyn C., uh, Yenny, and then, uh, as you can see, uh, uh, Harvey Lawrence as Martin in Human Centipede 2 for... Uh, full sequence. So first of all, let's get to a little bit of the plot. The movie surrounds this man, uh, Martin, who's an old, who's an, uh, about a, he's probably in about his 40s, and uh, he looks about as, I'm sure he's older in real life, but in the movie he's probably in his, you know, his 40s, and he lives with his mother. He works as a, a, a valet parker in, uh, in London, in, uh, in Britain or UK, in the, you know, of course. Anyways, he works as a valet parker, he parks people's cars, and he, he has he is obsessed with the movie The Human Centipede. You know this this movie right here. He ha there's a copy of it in the in the movie. Anyways, he is obsessed with this movie. So he sits he sits in his little office, this sits in this little thing with the window, and uh, he watches The Human Centipede on repeat. He licks his lips. He like touches his he l touches his tongue, touches the screen. He is he is aroused by the movie, and uh, he decides you know. Maybe I maybe I can do this, you know. So he has like a little. So I won't say too much, but he has a book where he has like cutouts of the human centipede, where he drew what he wants to do. His mom thinks he's kind of weird. He has a psychiatrist because when he was a kid, he was sexually abused by his father. So, anyways, that's the concept of the human centipede two full sequence. So first of all, you remember how, you know, like I was saying with my Human Centipede review, where the Human Centipede is more of a psychological movie, well, the Human Centipede 2 full sequence is very, there's psycho, there is psychological aspects, okay, I will say that, especially the, the ending is psychological, the ending is, very, and I'll talk about that why later on, you know, I'll give spoilers later on to people who have seen the movie, that way I can tell you what my opinions and what my theories for 3 are and stuff like that. So anyways... Uh, Human Centipede 2, uh, it amps it up. It amps up on the gore and the blood and the crap, <laughs> the poop. It amps that up. Uh, amps up, like I said, on the blood. The this instead of you know, uh, you can see here. Uh, you can see on my poster actually. Instead of being you know, you can see my poster right here. Instead of being a uh, three people, three people in the first uh, Human Centipede, there are twelve. In the second uh, Human Centipede film, full sequence, so you kind of see, you know, he amps it up. Uh, very grotesque. A lot of people would think uh, very. A lot. Some people would probably get offended by a few scenes. I can think of one scene in particular around the end that someone might someone might get offended by, because you don't see it. You don't see uh, children. Not a, it's not a child. It's something younger actually, but you don't see something like that die on screen very often. So I can see people getting offended by that. Uh. But uh, like I said, very gory, very sadistic uh, film. But the cool thing about Human Centipede 2 is, is that it it amps up on the gore and everything, 
but there's still that there's still that sense of black humor to it. Um, there's once I'm gonna go ahead and get a little spoiler so you guys. Or let me go ahead and give my full opinion on Human Centipede Two. Here's here's the disc. Uh, once again, of course, Tom Six is the director. He's he'll be the director of all three, so no worries about having someone you know make a knockoff or anything because there will only be three of them, so no worries. You know he's he'll make three, and then he's gonna stop and do the Onania Club. Anyways, uh, it says. Owen Gilberman from Entertainment Weekly says, Would have the Marquis de Sade gagging into his popcorn could be the sickest B-movie ever made. Uh, Eric Cohn says, Will satisfy your gruesome expectations as sick as you might expect. And uh, Brett Easton Ellis says, The grossest movie ever made, but also kind of likable and charming. And... Um, the di this is a little different between Martin, Mart you know, Dr. Hyder talked, a you know, he had a decent amount of talking, you know, but Martin is completely silent in this movie. Now, he he makes noise, he makes kind of like, yee! literally, that's what he sounds like, you know, yee! Uh, he sounds kind of like that, and uh, he doesn't say anything, he kind of just, uh, he has asthma, I'm guessing he has asthma because he uses his inhaler, he's kind of big, so he breathes heavy and has kind of a breathing problem. Anyways, besides his, you know, his, you know, and the, and the weird kind of noises he makes with his mouth, his lips, that's, he doesn't actually say any words or talk anything. So, uh, great, uh, I'm going to be a little spoilerish. So if you, if you have not seen the movie, go ahead and skip over this. If you have, uh, go ahead and watch. So anyways, one of the main reasons I like this, though, is because he amps up on the gore. He amps up on the, uh. Let me see where I can put this. He uh, he amps up on the gore. He just he puts everything into the Human Centipede Two. He definitely makes the Human Centipede uh, One look like a little look like My Little Pony. And like I said, the third one is supposedly you know gonna make the second one look like uh, I believe he said a Disney film, which is pretty surprising when it's pretty gross. One of my favorite scenes in the movie though is uh, it's kind of, it's it's a very black humor moment, and it's when he's he's in his underwear. And he's naked. He's got blood on. He's got blood on him. And he he's in, he's he's he, not he's not naked, but he, he has underwear and his lab coat on. And the twelve people, this human centipede is circled. The twelve human centipede people are circled around him. And you got this orchestra choir kind of this ha 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 playing in the background as as he kind of does this. You know, he's kind of like lifting his hands to the heavens and kind of like circling around him. And it's a very quick scene. It's like a, maybe a, I'm trying to think, maybe a, maybe a five, six, maybe ten second. It's a very, very quick scene, but it's, it's very over the top and it's, it's kind of got, it's kind of funny, but, and you're also thinking, you know, what the heck am I watching kind of feeling, but it's a good, it's a good feeling. No, no, I'm not trying to say anything bad. It, it's, it's a great feeling when you watch it. Another of my favorite sequence is when, uh, when he, when he kills his mother, and he, and he, uh, he just, he smashes her head, and I forget what he kills her with, I, for, I forget, but he smashes her head in something, several times with something, and then he, and then he picks her up, and he sets her to the table casually, as her head's all smashed, you can't even see her face anymore, it's all smashed in, and she's still bleeding, um, and she's dead, of course, she sits, and he sits her at the table, and he starts eating, he just casually eats. And he hits the he hits the broom, you know, and the guy with the tattoos walks in and plays loud music. And he, I love how he shoots him. One of the many things I love too is how loud that pistol is in the movie. I love how loud the pistol is. Just you know, it's so loud and so effective. It's a really effective movie. It's one of uh, it takes it it does. I've seen a lot of movies uh, that that are uh, that some people would consider gross, and I would consider you know not gross. And it takes it takes a lot in the movie to gross me out, but the Human Centipede two, it it grosses me out in a good way. I love I love when movies are explicit. I love when they go all the way. I love when they don't uh when they throw away the whole censorship thing. I love when they just they just go all the way and they hold nothing uh, back. This was banned in Australia. It was banned in the UK for a while. I believe it was banned in Texas at a local film festival they had. Uh, it was banned in a lot of places, you know, so very grotesque and very bloody film. One of my favorite parts, and this is kind of a sick part, but I love the segment, 
is um when he first starts to do the surgery, it's a guy's butt, and he takes I believe he takes a a knife or something, a knife or a scalpel of some I think it's a knife, and he just cuts into the uh, butt, and then he just he just takes he just takes a cheek and he just rips it, and it just rips a huge hole. It's just it's so gross and ew. But I love this I love the sequence though because it just he goes the whole nine miles and even further with the blood. And the little thing about this one that makes it different and unique too that you know Doctor Hyder was a surgeon, so he used like you know he used you know uh, things to make him go to sleep, you know, with needles, and he so he uses you know actual stitches and bandages you know to cover up their knees and their butts you know and but uh martin uses whenever he knocks their teeth out he uses you know hammers which is a very grotesque scene uh he uses hammers he uses like uh let's see a duct tape when whenever he connects them instead of using bandages he just uses duct tape just duct tape around you know, around their their butts and and their knees. Uh, like I said, I'm trying to think of some other things. Having kind of a short term memory loss thing going on. No, I don't have that. I was just kidding. Anyways, uh, hammers, uh, knives. You know, he just he uses a lot of kind of of homemade uh tools instead of, you know, Dr. Hyder's, you know, surgeon thing, because this guy is just a, a guy that lived with his mother that's just killed his mom, and now he's, you know, doing these uh, things. Now, the cool thing about Human Centipede 2 is the ending. The ending still has me thinking, and I'll tell you why. And if you've seen the movie, you know why. And if you haven't seen the movie, skip over this part. It's huge spoilers getting ready to come. So the movie ends, as you know, with the 12 people, and then the person, they split right in the middle. The person in the middle rips their mouth off the butt, and they split, and he gets, and, you know, he gets pissed, and he starts to shoot every person. He starts to kill all of them. He starts shooting them in the head, and, you know, just killing all of them. He runs out of bullets, so he takes them and starts to not just slit their throat, but I love, he, like, carves out their neck. He just, you know, he doesn't just slit their throat, at, you know, like an average horror film. He carves at it, so it's mo a lot more grotesque. He carves at all their necks, you know, and they're all dead. So then, and that's how, and he stands there, and it kind of shows an overhead view, and that's how, that's how that sequence ends. After the, and of course, you know, the girl has her baby, you know, and she kicks, you know, pushes the head up against the gas pedal and, and drives off. And, uh, you know, he runs back inside before, you know, he's beaten on the window and kills everyone. And then here's how it ends. You know, he's sitting there on his desk, got the screen in front of him, and he's he's watching the human centipede again. And it ends with him just sitting there. And there's no blood on his face. You know, his hair's not messed up or anything. He's not wearing a lab coat. His, there's no blood. He's once again wearing his, his, his car parking, a valet uniform, and just sitting there like this, just kind of watching... He's just watching the movie with his glasses on and everything, just sitting there watching it. Movie cuts, it ends. So it leads you to think, it puts some psychological factor in, saying, you know, did he even create the centipede is the big question people had. You know, did he create it or did he just think about it, you know? So when I first watched the movie, um, I didn't really – I saw the psychological factor, but I was like, I think he created it. You know, that was my, that was my opinion. I thought he created it. And then, you know, I guess he just he just cleaned himself. It didn't show, but you read through the lines, you know, I assumed that he just cleaned himself up, and now he's back to normal, and nobody knows what he did. So anyways, nobody knows what he did, so. But after watching it a second, a third, and now I've seen the movie more than 30 times, probably, literally, I'm being serious, uh, now that I've seen this film so many times, that psychological factor kicks in, and I kind of think that he may have just thought, he may have just, like the entire movie, he was actually just sitting there, and we were seeing what was actually going on in his mind, that he didn't do any of that, but it, it, it leads me to think that, did he, did he kill all the people? Because, you know, at first he kind of, he gets all the people ready, he throws them in the back of his black van, and he drives them there, and he throws them all in the warehouse, you know, and leaves them there for a few days until he gets all his people ready. 
So it leads me to think, did did he do any of that? Did he, I mean, what he, what what you know? It leads you to think, you know, what actually happened in this movie? Uh, so I'm just kind of thinking when I watched it, I was like, huh. And that's one of the most interesting things about Human Centipede Two. Is that it? It it's a film. You know, a lot of horror films nowadays. Uh, they the thing about horror films nowadays is. They don't stick with you for very long. So you know, I'll do. I do like a lot of horror films nowadays, but a lot of some of them, they don't stick with you. You see them, you watch them, that's it. But the thing about Human Centipede one, and even especially number two, is that they stick with you. Like not not just because of the grotesque, but the grotesqueness does stick with you. The bloodiness does stick with you. But just the original and the unique and creative idea that Tom Six has done sticks with you. So you're thinking about it days, and I'd say even months afterwards. And it it's just so so good of a film that you can't you can't help but notice human sympathy. Whether whether you like the movie or not, you've gotta. I believe to an extent you've gotta respect it because. You know, the director went through so much, and it's only made, I think the movie's only made for about, a, you know, about one million dollars. I believe both had roughly the same budget, um, and it, like, uh, if you don't, I forgot to say, uh, I, this, you know, now, the spoilers are done now, just so you guys know, you can come back and watch. Uh, you can see here that it's shot in black and white, uh. I don't know. If, I don't know if it was shot in black and white. I think it was shot in color, and then it, it was converted to black and white later on. Either way, I don't. I don't know how. Either way, it's it's a black and white movie. Uh, so it, it makes it kind of original. So you think you know a lot of people would say, oh, you know, since it's black and white, it's it's not very bloody. Oh, it's it's very bloody. It's very grotesque. And uh, the thing about it is the black the black and white and the gray. You know, tint. Uh, Shades and tones and textures and patterns of the film. <coughs> excuse me. Excuse me. Uh, they add to the movie's experience in reality. Actually, one of my favorite sequences, actually, one of my favorite sequences actually. It's kind of a gross sequence. It's shortly before they everyone you know craps in each other's mouths, and he has. They're all constipated. His, his human centipede is constipated. And so he has laxative. He has a like a gallon of laxative. And he has his needle. I believe he does with a needle. And he starts stabbing the butts of everyone. Just all 12. And so they can go to the bathroom. And he just goes to every person and goes. Tch, tch, tch. I like that sequence a lot. Just, I don't know. It's, just, it's gross. It's just, ugh. And there's all, there's one shade of color in the movie, and that's I won't say what it is, but there's one shade of color. Think like Schindler's List, except uh, a different color. <laughs> and uh, it's it's really it's a really gross sequence, but a great sequence because, uh, like I said earlier, Tom Six does not hold back on anything. If you can't notice, I'm kind of tired. It's like three in the morning. I'm doing a review on my one of my favorite films. Uh, like I said though, uh, Human Centipede Two. I do like the first Human Centipede more, but I but I do like Human Centipede uh, Two also. I think they're both great films. They're on par with each other, but I don't like the first one more just because of Doctor Hyder, you know, Dieter Laser playing him. And uh, I like Martin though. Martin, you can see him right here. His demeanor is very cool. Uh. He's almost like a little kid. You're like you're trying to tell him, you know, stop, don't, don't do that. You know, you're not supposed to be doing that. You know, that's what it feels like. You know, he he's a villain. You know, he is. A, you know, you, people look at him as a villain, but in reality, there's a reason to why he acts like that, and there's a reason to why he does what he does, if he even does it. You know, because of the psychological ending, um, because of his whole, you know, daddy dad being abusive, and you know, his mom wanting to kill him. You know, I um. Now there's kind of spoiler scene. Sorry, this is a kind of a spoiler review. Uh, another great scene is when Martin walks in on his mother stabbing uh, the pillow. It's lights lights off, and she walks in and she has a knife and she just starts going 
kind of a classic psycho kind of vibe. It has a really classic, just 70s vibe right there. And she's just, you know, like this. And she's going, psh, 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 psh. And she's stabbing the pillow and the blankets. But, and then uh, he walks, Martin walks in the doorway and turns the light on. And what does she realize? She's not stabbing Martin. She's stabbing a lousy blanket and pillows. And he realize, and he sees right there, you know, he knows, he knows, you know, my mom wants to kill me. And the funny thing is, he goes and lays down on the bed. She just stands there. She don't do anything. She does let here in a few seconds, which I'll tell you in a few seconds. But she doesn't do anything. She just stands there and says, doesn't say anything. She just stands there. She has a chance to stab him right then, but she doesn't. And I believe what happens afterwards, if I'm not mistaken, I believe what happens is she goes up under his mattress and she pulls out a semen centipede booklet with all his drawings and cutouts and of the movie in it. And she says, you know, one of my favorite quotes in the movie, and I got it memorized. She literally goes, most of it memorized. She goes, you know, she goes, mouth to anus, one digestive system, you know, the human centipede. And then she goes, you know, is this the sick? Is this, you know, the sick and perverted film you have been talking about? And she grips it up, you know, and he gets all upset and, you know, picks it up, puts it in the trash bag, you know, in that whole sequence. Goes back to the warehouse. I love that quote. Another quote I love, and it's like the only time you hear the centipede talk in this movie. Is, uh, the centipede talks a lot more in the first one, but this one's a little different. Not a ton of talking in this movie. You know, a lot of it is, you know, effective scenes and stuff like that. Anyways, uh, it's the front guy talking because the only guy who can talk. The other one, you know, his mouth sits the person's butt so they can't say anything but go, mm, mm, ah. That's all I can do. And cry. That's all I can do. Anyways, uh, so, uh, he goes, you know, he, he, tell, he tells everyone, you know, he's going to stitch his, you know, butt to mouth. And, uh, he tells everybody that. And, uh, and then he tells, you know, the human centipede, it's, it's, it's just a film. It's, it's just a film. You know, that's what he tells everyone. That's what he's trying to tell the, Martin, you know, but of course Martin doesn't listen. And like I was saying, we're already at 21 minutes, another long review, but I believe that, um, uh, I believe the movie deserves it. I love the cover, by the I don't know who designed the cover. I don't know if that was the director's choice or marketing or just what, but whoever it was, great idea. I love how Hyder is in the reflection. And the also the difference, I forgot to say this, kind of random, but the difference between Martin and Hyder is that Martin is sexually aroused by the centipede. And there is one sequence towards the end of the movie, and the scene's about, it's about a, about a two-minute sequence, I believe. It's like about, a, I believe about two, maybe three-minute sequence. Where he does, where he does, I won't say what, but he does, I hope it's not, I hope I'm not spoiling anything, if I am, sorry. Uh, he, he does something, very explicit, because he is sexually aroused by the centipede. And, uh, let's just, I, I um, uh, I kind of, I don't know if I want to say this, there's a few things I want to say, but I, I think they might give them away. Actually, I think I'm just going to be surprised. Uh, I will say, I'll say one scene, but I won't say the other one. One of these scenes, you see him get sexually aroused, and you see him arousing himself, and, uh, it involves sandpaper. That's all I'm going to say. I won't say anything else. And it's a pretty gross scene, but, uh, it adds, it adds to the movie, and, and it makes, I think it's a great scene. <laughs> think, think, you think, you think I'm sick if you want, but... It adds, it adds to just the effectiveness and the grotesqueness, and it adds to the overall feel of the movie, and it makes the movie an original concept that everyone should see, even if you're not into horror films. I know it is an acquired taste, don't get me wrong. Human centipede films are sophisticated, they're an acquired taste, but if you give them a chance and you see the movies for what they are, uh, there's, there's a few black humor moments in here as well. You know, I didn't talk about all of them, but there are a few. There are, there are several black humor moments. Uh, that are both in the second one and the first and the first one, and I'm sure there'll be tons in the third one as well. But uh, just a great horror film with some black humor, you know, some dark black humor thrown in there, and I can't wait to see 
what he does with Human Centipede 3. Uh, some theories I have. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and get a little spoilerish. Uh, third one, I believe that the... Uh, if you don't know, uh, D I, I talked about this a long time ago. Dita Laser will not be returning because of a lawsuit that happened. Uh, he didn't like some script, a script in the third one. He thought, uh, I, he didn't think it fit his role or something like that. And uh, Tom Six told him, you know, you signed a contract, buddy. You got to do this. So now I guess he's getting sued or something like that. So uh, kind of sad, you know, because I like Dita Laser, but you know what can you do? I'm sure Tom Six will pick someone else to play. His character. Anyways, if you don't know, Harvey Lawrence as Martin is returning for Human Centipede 3. Dieter Laser was going to return and tell the whole lawsuit ordeal, and now he's not going to. Um, and also, so we have uh, Tom Six coming, and also uh, Tom Six is going to, well, from, my, from what I understand, according to IMDb.com and other sources, he's Tom Six, the director himself and writer of the movie for the script, He's also going to um, play a part in the movie. Not not a huge role, but I do believe he's going to play a pretty supporting role in the movie. Martin's going to return. Harvey Lawrence is going to return as Martin, I'm guessing. And then, uh, recently in the talks, this, um, a while back ago, apparently Tom, I don't know if this is true, but apparently Tom Six was supposedly talking to Udo Kier from Blade and from countless things. Anyways... Apparently, Tom Six was talk was talking to Udo Kier uh, to play uh, Dieter Laser, and that's a pretty good choice actually because uh, you put a picture by them side by side, and they look pretty similar. Udo Kier looks maybe ten years younger than Dieter Laser, but they look their face, their faces, their wrinkles, when their hairs. I mean, they had a picture on some website. I think it was Horbid.com that I looked up. It was a, it was an older. Um, it was an older months ago article when this first when this news was first released months ago, and uh, it was a picture of them both side by side, and uh, they look pretty similar. So if Udo Kier was picked, uh, I think he'd do pretty well. You know, German accent. Uh, now he now I know uh, I know he's I know Dieter Laser speaks German a lot uh, in the film. Like he like he'll speak a German line, and the subtitles are appearing on the screen. So I don't I guess. I don't know. I don't know if Udo Kier knows any German. I don't think he's German himself, so I think he may have to learn some, or maybe they'll just have him just have a German accent and just speak English the entire time. Either way, either way, I think Udo Kier would do a great job, or whoever they get to play, because it doesn't. I don't think it'd be great if Tom Six and and Dieter Laser so solved the lawsuit, and then they just you know he came back and everything was solved. But it doesn't look like it's going to be that simple. So. Uh, but I still think they're both great at. I I still think Tom Six is a great director. I still think Dieter Laser is a phenomenal uh, actor. I just don't know if his whole you know he's he pretty much got pretty. From what I understand, he got pissed about the uh, about the way the script was was you know. In my opinion, you know, no offense, you didn't like the script, but no offense to Dieter Laser, but suck it up, play your part. You're getting paid for it. There's one reason. Another reason is you're gonna, it's going to create a huge cult following. There's your second reason. And I just think that... I think that Dieter Laser should have just sucked it up and just uh, made the movie. You know, but I guess... I, don't, I haven't even started filming it from what I understand. Um, but I think he should have just sucked it up and been involved and just... Make, just make the dang movie. You don't... You may have not liked the script, but just give it a chance. I think he was just being a too little... A too, too cynical. He was just... I don't know the whole story, so I can't really say because I wasn't there, and I'm not involved with the movie in any way, so I really can't get... No, don't, don't know the whole story. But from what I understand, um, I'm not trying to pick sides, but I'm on Tom Six's side, and I, you know, because he's the director, and of course, the director in a movie always has the final say-so, even though the producers are the ones funding the film and funding the money, I do believe... Uh, Tom Six has the final say, so go ahead and listen to the guy, you know, I'm sure he sees, the director, Tom Six, he sees the movie as he wants it, and, you know, so just do it, I mean, just, just do it, I mean, I know if I had, if I had a once in a lifetime opportunity to play an iconic villain like Dr. Hyder in a movie like Human Centipede 3, 
I would do it. You know, I know I would never get that role because, well, for one, I'm not 70 years old, and for one, I don't look German. I have a German accent. I'm American. Anyways, uh, but if I had a role like that, I would play it no matter what, and I would love doing it. So Tom Six is a is a god. Just kidding. <laughs> I do the exhaust awesome, though. Anyways, uh, some other news about Human Centipede 3, if you don't know, it's going to, uh, from what I understand, the first one was in, you know, very bright, kind of clinical colors, a lot, lots of bright blues and whites and stuff like that, you know, lights and, you know, a lot, very clinical. Second one was very gritty, all handheld, a lot of handheld shots. First one was a lot of, uh, you know, tripod, stuff like that, but the second one, lots of handheld. Now, it's not shaky or anything like that, but lots of handheld. It's very, very gritty, very raw, black and white adds to the effect. Very bloody. And the third one, from what I understand, I'm not for sure, though, so don't quote me on it. From what I understand, it's going to be, uh, I forget what it's called. It's a certain color uh, scheme they're using, where everything's going to look unnaturally bright. Uh, can't think of it, honestly. If I think of it, I'll tell you. But everything should look very bright. It's not going to be, I think it's going to, it's going to be in color. It's not going to be in black and white, but it's not going to be just your average color scheme in a movie. It's not just going to be an average color scheme. It's going to be like a very kind of bright, luminescent, very, very bright film from what I understand. Um, uh, there's a word for it. I just can't think of it. Anyways, very bright color scheme. Uh, maybe, maybe clinical again, but I don't, I'm not really for sure. It's going, uh, the first one was in the Netherlands. Uh, Germany, of course. Second one was in uh, London, UK, Britain, Great Britain, of course. And then the third one is actually going to play, take place in the southern uh, United States. Uh, I'm not for sure which state, but the southern United States. So we had, you know, three different places. It's going to take place in America. Like I said, Martin's returning. Uh, he am He's amping it up the people again. So it went from three people to 12 people, he's amping it up to a, a whopping 500 uh, plus people. Uh, once again, of course, Tom Six is writing and directing it. That, that's an obvious. I'm sure you guys already know that, so I don't even know why I said that. Anyways, apparently there's going to be, according to a tweet that Tom Six said, there's going to be some machine guns. There's going to be helicopter guns. And this is going to be the most insanely sick core film out of the three and apparently is going to be his favorite out of the three Human Centipede films. We got first sequence, full, and now final. So final sequence, Human Centipede 3, will be his favorite movie out of the three Human Centipede films. I'm trying to think if there's anything else. Uh, I don't, can't think of anything else. Uh, oh, here we go. Remember the strange ending of uh, one, and one's ending just kind of left you hanging, you know, about we, we were wondering. The only person to survive was the girl in the middle, uh, Ashley C. Williams, and it just kind of, it pans out. Camera pans out, you see the roof of the house, it ends. Credits roll. And we don't know whether or not she survived. We, she may have died, uh, and then, or she may have, she may still be there, so we don't know. And then from Incident B2... Uh, standpoint, it's like a meta sequel almost. Like by, by meta, I mean like it treats human, it treats the human centipede movie right here. It treats as it's as treats human centipede two as a human centipede two is real life, and there's a man that is obsessed with this movie, and now it's his obsession with this movie. He creates, he goes to create a human centipede with twelve people out of it, and. So we don't know, uh, and then the ending with that one is, you know, we don't know whether it was psychological ending. We don't even know if he did or not. So one, we don't know if she survived, and two, we don't even know if he did the, created the centipede. May, he may have, been, did it, may have been in his head. So three, in Human Centipede 3, final sequence, we're supposed to find out about both one and two, both strange endings, both great endings, but kind of cliffhanger endings. But three... Where it's gonna wrap everything up, and from what I understand, uh, we're gonna find out what what was up with one and two's ending in the movie. And I'm ho I don't know how it's gonna open up. I know two. I know Human Centipede two opens up with the ending of one. He kind of tricks you, you know, and it's great that he does that. You know, he, we're like, oh, here we go. It picks up immediately. 
except it's in black and white, you know, they have him, she's like holding her hand, you know, and, and then it, as, and then it pans out, and it pans out to March and watching, it pans out to, you know, March and watching the, the, uh, he pans out to Martin watching the Human Centipede, uh, first sequence on his laptop, in his office as he's, uh, you know, as he, you know, his job is being a valet parker, in London. Anyways, I'm kind of, I'm kind of ranting and going on, and babbling, <laughs> but I, like I said, I love both these films. If you haven't seen my Human Centipede, uh, first sequence review, uh, go ahead and go watch it. Uh, I think they're both great. If I had to rate Human Centipede 2, I'd also give it a 100 out of 10 because they're both great films. Though, if it was the end of the world and there was a gun to my head and the, and the person said, choose one film that you like more, that which Human Centipede you like, I would have to go ahead and go with the Human Centipede first sequence. And the reason is because I like Dr. Hyder more than Martin. I think they're both great actors. I think they're both good uh Good characters in the movie, but me, myself, and I, I like Dr. Hyder and his demeanor. Though Martin's also great. I like his, you know, his ee! And I, there's several sequences in the movie that are great. Uh, I just want to give a big, once again, I said this in my first video, but once again, a big shout out to Tom Six. And I think he's a great guy. He's genius. He's, he makes he makes original scripts because a lot of days in Hollywood, Especially Hollywood, and even and even a lot of some indie films, it's hard to find an original script, an original movie, an original director. But Tom Six does all three. He's a great guy, great interviews, uh, really open-minded. He's not cynical. He's not, you know, he's has kind of a big ego, but that, that's a good thing, you know. He he thinks very highly of himself. That's that's a good thing in, in a joking manner, of course. I, you know, I follow him on Twitter, you know, and I, and I wanted to say thank you, uh, Tom Six for following me. If you did, if you, if you watch this video, Tom Six, uh, on Twitter, I'm the guy that my name on Twitter is, uh, what, what's my name on Twitter? I think, I think my name on Twitter is, uh, Mr. Lamo 101, I believe. Let me, I don't, I use Twitter all the time, but I don't ever really look at my name. Give me a second and I can tell you, uh. Yes, I am. I am. It's showing my name on Twitter for some reason. I don't know why it's doing that. It's supposed to show my. Yeah, I am. I am Mr. Lamo 101 Jeremy Kelly on Twitter. Anyways, uh, thank you for following me. By the way, it's it's great to be followed by what what I think you are one of um uh, you are one of my uh, idols in uh, filmography. You are one of my just you know I if if I was to ever be a film director, which would be great, even an actor, I would definitely portray my, I would, you would definitely be one of my top, if not the top influence of the films that I would direct, if that was to be possible for me to be a film director, you would be the first guy I would go to and email and call up and say, hey, I have an idea, well, you know, would you help me out? Because I think that you have some great ideas. I can't wait to see um, the Onania Club I know, I know you haven't released anything about it. I know you haven't released anything about the Onania Club, but I have a, I have some theories on what it might be about, and the reason is is because I looked up uh, I looked up the word Onania, and Onania is is an addiction to masturbation. So uh, I know it's going to be kind of a psychological horror film, I think, and that's all it's been released about, it, and that may not even be true, but I know it's gonna be a horror film. Um. Because I know you, I know since Human Centipede, you've been, I know you did, I know you did a film called, uh, Gay in Amsterdam, and I forget the other one, I think, Honey, maybe, Honeys? Uh, maybe not. Anyways, uh, which were, I know also kind of controversial films, if I'm not mistaken. Uh, I actually haven't seen. Anyways, uh, Human Centipede are great films, and like I was saying, uh, I was thinking that Onania Club might be about a club or a man himself who is addicted to a uh, masturbation. That's what's what I'm that's what I'm that's what I'm going on at least and and somehow it's going to get very gory and explicit. And according to you, you said in your tweet, I believe, uh that you said that uh Onania Club 
was going to be even sicker than the Human Centipede films. Not just the first or second one, it was going to be sicker than all three Human Centipede films. You said it was going to be sicker than the Human Centipede uh, franchise of movies themselves, so I can't wait to see The Onania Club. Uh, hopefully, if, it, it'd, be, it'd, be, it'd be awesome if I enjoyed it more than Human Centipede, because... Human Centipede is my all-time favorite film, and before this one, before this review becomes an hour long, I'm at 40 minutes now, before it becomes an hour long, I'm going to go ahead and stop this review and just say that, Tom Six, you are a great director, I appreciate everything you do, I think that you just, you created a very creative, innovative idea, and I don't mean to repeat myself, but I just think that, I, th I do not think people should overlook this movie. Uh, I think I don't think it should be underrated, and it's definitely not not overrated. But uh, I think a lot of people overlook the movie because of its concept and because of its uh, controversy controversiality and because of its uh, grotesqueness of the of the uh, concept of the films. And I think people overlook them because of that. And I think that people should give them a chance because I love the Human Centipede movies. And I love you as a director. Kind of obsessive, if you can't tell. I don't mean to come on as a creeper. Because I just, you know... Anyways, uh... That's my review of Human Centipede uh, 2. Full sequence. If you, don't, if, you, if you don't know Human Centipede 3, final sequence, I believe, will come out in 2013. I'm going to take a guess and a gander here that it's going to come out in late 2013. It's just, it's just a guess. Uh... It's a guess it's gonna, but I'm pretty sure it's gonna come out in 2013. Uh, hopefully, because I'm I I I don't want to wait so too long. But uh, anyways, I think both are great films. I love the movies, and if, and uh, if you watch this, Tom Six, thank you for watching. I really appreciate it because I think you're you're one of my idols. Anyways, uh, love both movies. Can't wait to see the third one. I'm even so obsessed that I know recently they're, they're, they're releasing a UK version, but I don't live in the UK, so it'll be pointless to buy, but they're releasing a UK a steelbook for disc of the Human Centipede films that shows the premiere, special interviews and commentaries and all that that, the, that these versions don't have, so I would love to buy that, but I'd have to buy a region-free player and go through a big hassle, so maybe I'll buy it as a mantle piece or something because it'd be really cool to have. Anyways... Thank you, Tom Six, for directing these great films. You are a great guy. I love you. Anyways, great films. Thank you for watching 41 minutes of a of, of video by Centipede Geek. Like, comment, subscribe to the page below, and I'll see you guys later with another DVD review. And just so you guys know, it probably won't be 40 minutes long because I don't, you know, I cannot love another film as much as I love the Human Centipede unless it's directed by Tom Six because Tom Six is a genius. Anyways, see you guys later.